In part three of this multi-part video series on the P versus NP problem, I ended by talking about how there was this interesting gap, this gap between the best known algorithm for multiplication of two n-digit numbers and the best known lower bound, in other words, the, the best known analysis for the theoretical minimum number of steps required to multiply two n-digit numbers. And the fact that there's this gap starts to indicate that we are at a point where our understanding is breaking down from a mathematical perspective. We really don't know how to multiply any faster than the best known algorithms out there. And yet at the same time, we have no way to mathematically prove that there isn't a better algorithm out there. And so now I want to consider a broader problem. We talked about this one gap, and it's a fairly small gap in the context of multiplication. Are there problems for which there's a much bigger gap, a bigger gap in understanding, or a bigger gap between the best known solution and the best known lower bound? And it turns out there is, or there are many problems that seem to have to fall into this category of, of having much bigger gaps. And one of the first problems I want to consider is a problem that's actually, in many ways, the polar opposite, the exact converse of multiplication. And that is, imagine I gave you uh, two numbers, and let's say they were uh, A and B, and I said A times B is equal to 851. Can you come up with A and B? Aside from the trivial answer that A equals 1 and B equals 851 and vice versa. So in other words, can you come up with values for, for A and B that are so that they're both bigger than 2 and that uh, they're both less than uh, 850 or, 800, or less than or equal to 850? You can come up with two values for uh, A and B that meet this criteria such that their product is equal to 851, you'll have solved this problem. And I'm calling this problem this, this problem of being able to come up with the constituent factors of a number. This problem is known as the factorization problem. Okay? And already your intuition should be somewhat peaked here because what I'm really asking you to do is, is start off with, okay, I'm, I'm asking you to do the exact opposite of multiplication. In other words, I'm saying, given the product, can you decompose the number into smaller factors? Now, actually, it turns out that in this particular case, um, even though this problem might seem a bit harder, it's actually not that bad. In fact, 851 can be broken up into 23 times 57, or 23 times 37, rather. And if you think about that, that actually, I asked you this problem. In the previous video, I said, what's 23 times 37? We worked out as 851, and so as a result, 851 will be equal to 23 times 37. Okay, so in this particular case, the answer was not that complicated. But now what if I gave you another number? Let's say I gave you the number um, 174,661. Can you find uh, an A and B so that A times B is equal to 174,661 other than the trivial answer of A equals 1 or, or B equals 1? Okay. This is, this is certainly a more complex problem, at least for a human being, because these numbers are a bit bigger. Uh, it, it's not as easy for you to come up with an answer, presumably. Um, but this problem is, is still not hard for a computer because a computer can quite quickly try out all these possible combinations to arrive at an answer. Okay. Now, what if I up the ante a bit? What if I gave you a number that's a few thousand digits long? Okay. It turns out that for a few thousand digits, a number that's a few thousand digits long, I can actually stump a computer on that problem. Okay, even though, interestingly enough, a computer can take two 1,000-digit numbers and it can multiply those numbers in a fraction of a second, okay, even though it can do that, given the product of two 1,000-digit numbers without any other information about the product, it can potentially take the fastest computers in the world millions, millions of years using the best-known factoring methods and algorithms out there to decompose that number that's, that's a few thousand digits long into its factors. Okay, and you might want to say, well, what, why is that? Why is that the case? And it turns out mathematicians and computer scientists don't really have a good idea for why that is the case. Okay, as surprising as that is. Okay, and here's a, a bit of very, very loose intuition, but intuition that unfortunately cannot be made more rigorous in a mathematical sense. So imagine you were to try, let's say, that naive way of factoring a number. What's the naive way of trying to factor a fairly large number? One thing you can try to do is, is an approach known as trial division. 
And in trial division, what you basically will try to do is try to divide by all the possible reasonable values that it could potentially divide 174,661. So for example, what you might try to do is uh, successfully try different numbers, and then you might, for example, uh, try 2, 3, 5, and so on to see if each of these uh, is a divisor of this broader number. And if you were able to find one non-trivial divisor, you would in turn find uh, another non-trivial divisor, and that would give you a mechanism for decomposing this number, 174,661, into two factors. Okay? Now, the process of doing trial division, if you have a number that's D digits, or let's, let's say N digits long, okay, an N digit number would require approximately, or on the order of 10 to the N over 2 steps to decompose using trial division. Okay, and this number, I won't go into how I derive this number, but this number grows fast. It actually grows exponentially, exponentially in the input size. Okay, quickly this number gets very, very unwieldy. In fact, it gets astronomically big. Uh, to give you a sense, okay, to give you a sense, if you were just dealing with a number, let's say our initial number was a few hundred digits long and you wanted to factor it, okay, then 10 raised to the power n over 2 would be an astronomically big number. And I mean that both in a figurative and in a very literal sense. If you had a several hundred digit number, the value of n over 2 would exceed the number of atoms in the known universe. That's how big a quantity we're talking about, okay? So this number, 10 to the n over 2, gets really big, really fast, even for modest values of n, okay? Now, having said that, it's important to note that, and here's where, where mathematicians start to struggle, is that at the end of the day, trial division as a factoring mechanism is only one strategy, okay? Are there better strategies? Can we somehow decrease the search space or somehow hone in on the right answer with maybe much less work or significantly less work? Well, it turns out there are better strategies for factoring a number, for being able to decompose it into its constituent factors. But having said that, none of these better strategies seems to be able to solve this problem in any practical amount of time for numbers that are even a few hundred digits long, okay, let alone numbers that are thousands of digits. Okay? And so multiplication, what we've noticed, has this kind of intriguing property. Okay, it's got this intriguing property that it's actually easy to multiply two numbers, but given their product, it seems to be hard to decompose that number into its constituent factors. Okay, it's easy to go in one direction, but it appears hard to go in the other direction. And functions that have that property where it's easy to go in one direction, but, but somehow seems hard or, or intractable or difficult to go in the other direction, such functions are known as one way functions. Basically, we're saying go easy to go in one direction, but hard to go in the other direction. And multiplication appears to have this, this one wayness property where it's easy to multiply numbers, but given the product of two numbers, it's not always easy to, or does not always seem to be easy to go backwards, to find the constituent factors of that number. And the challenge, again, is that we don't really understand in a deep sense why that is. We know that some of the more obvious strategies don't do the trick, but we have no underlying reason. We haven't been able to come up with a reason why there isn't a better strategy out there that has not yet been discovered. Okay, so this is a very natural stopping point for this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk more about factorization and one-way functions, and, and maybe in a, in a more loose sense, why we even care about some of these notions.